Okay, in today's video, I am going to go over how we use the kinematic equations in physics to analyze the one-dimensional horizontal motion of objects. And these are the four kinematic equations. Sometimes I like to call them the big four. Now, in a moment, I'm going to go over a couple of examples how we use the kinematic equation, but there's a few things I want to say briefly first. First of all, it's important to remember that these equations are used when we have constant acceleration, when the acceleration is staying the same. Now, that means that in the velocity will be either increasing or decreasing, but the acceleration will be staying the same constant acceleration. Now you will notice we have four equations, and in these four equations we have five different variables. They are the initial velocity, the final velocity, the change in position, the acceleration, and the time. Okay, And we can use these equations to solve for any of these five variables. Now in typical problems, for kinematic equations, you will be given three of these variables and asked to solve for the fourth. You should notice that each of these equations has four variables in them. So if you're given three and asked to solve for the fourth, you can use for one of these equations. For example, this first equation has the change in position, the initial velocity, the final velocity, and the time. So if you're given three of these things, then you can solve for the fourth. That's the way the equations work. Now, I want to point out that in your textbook, the initial velocity is probably represented as v0, as the velocity at time zero. I like to put vi, because in your textbook, also, the final velocity is probably just represented as v. I like to put vf, so therefore I can keep those two things separate much more easily if I have vi and vf, or the initial velocity and the final velocity. Okay, so let's actually go through now and do a couple of problems and see how we solve for the one-dimensional horizontal motion of objects using the four kinematic equations. Okay, now here's the first problem. A car is waiting at a stoplight for the signal to turn green. When it does, the car accelerates from rest at a rate of 5.5 meters per second squared for a time of 4.25 seconds, and we want to determine how far the car is going to travel. Now, I think the most important thing to do, and the first thing you should always do when you have these problems, is write down all five of the variables. That would be the initial velocity, the final velocity, the change in position, the acceleration, and the time. Write all five of them down, and then write in, fill in what you've been given, and what you're trying to solve for, the knowns and the unknowns. Let's read the problem carefully and fill those things in. It says a car is waiting at a stoplight. When it does, it accelerates from rest. From rest tells you that it starts at rest, and that's the initial velocity, is zero meters per second. Then we're given the acceleration. Then we're given the time. We're asked to solve for the change in position or the distance, and we're not given, and we're not going to solve for the final velocity. So therefore, you can see, as I said in the previous slide, we're given three things, the initial velocity, the acceleration, and the time. We're asked to solve for a fourth, and therefore, we can get out our kinematic equation and figure out which equation we're going to use. Now, how do we figure that out? This is how we figure that out. We want to solve for the change in position. Therefore, the equation has to have, at a minimum, the change in position in it. So let's look and see. Does the first equation have the change in position? Yes, it does have the change in position. So maybe I can use this equation. Well, the other thing the equation has to have in it are the other three variables that we have been given. So let's see. Do we know the initial velocity? Yes, we do. Do we know the final velocity? No, we don't know the final velocity. Therefore, we cannot use this equation. Let's look at the next equation. We are solving for the change in position. It has to have the change in position. This equation does not. We cannot use that equation. The next equation, yes, it has the change in position. So we're looking for the change in position. It has that in it. That's a good sign. Now, do we know the other three variables in the equation? The initial velocity, yes. The time, yes. The acceleration, yes, and of course this time is the same as this time, and we know the time, so therefore we know that we can use this equation. Now let's just check the last equation, just for the heck of it. It has final velocity. We don't know the final velocity, therefore we cannot use that equation. So we're going to use this third equation, and we're going to do that on the next slide and bring all the information and the equation, and we're just going to fill the values in and solve for the change in position. Now the other thing you should notice in this problem and with this equation is that the initial velocity is zero. 
The initial velocity times the time is therefore also going to be zero, so we can simplify this equation because this term is zero, so therefore this equation becomes the change in position is equal to one-half at squared. Now we know the acceleration, we know the time, we can fill the, vol excuse me, fill the values in, one-half times 5.5 times 4.25 squared, and you get that the car traveled 49.7 meters during that 4.25 seconds. Okay, all we did was we wrote down all five variables, plugged, the, no, wrote down the knowns and the unknowns, figured out which equation we're going to use, plug the values in, get the answer with the correct units. Let's try one more. Susie is riding her bike, and she's riding at 8.7 meters per second. Suddenly, she's being chased by Chompers, the dog. To get away, she accelerates at 1.5 meters per second for 10 seconds, and we want to know what is her final speed. Once again, I'm going to write down all five variables, initial velocity, final velocity, change in position, acceleration, and time. Now I'm going to fill in the things that I know and the things that I don't know. All right, the first thing I know is the initial velocity, 8.7 meters per second. The next thing I know is the acceleration, 1.5 meters per second squared. The next thing I know is the time, 10 seconds. We're trying to find the final velocity. We're not given the change in position. We're not trying to solve for the change in position. And therefore, now I can use my kinematic equation because once again, I've been given one, two, three of the variables. I'm going to solve for the fourth, and I need to have an equation that has the final velocity in it. So let's check the first equation. Does it have the final velocity? Yes. Do I know the other three variables? Well, I don't know the change in position, so automatically I'm not going to use that equation. Now, the next equation, do I know the final velocity? Well, I'm trying to solve for the final velocity, and I have the final velocity here. Do I know the other three values in the equation? The initial velocity? Yes, I do know that. The acceleration? Yes, I do know that. The time? Yes, I do know that. So therefore, I know that I can use this second equation. Now, let's look and just check the other two equations. Sometimes there's more than one equation you can use, and sometimes one is easier than the other. Now, I'm looking for the final velocity. This one does not have the final velocity. This one has the final velocity, but it also has a change in position, which I don't know, so therefore I can't use that equation. Now, on the next slide, bring my information with me. I have my equation. Now I can fill in the values because I know the initial velocity. That's 8.7. I know the acceleration and the time. 8.7 plus 1.5 times 10. That's 1.5 times 10 is 15 plus 8.7 gives us that her final velocity, Susie's final velocity, is 27, excuse me, 23.7 meters per second as she tries to get away from Chompers, the dog. Okay, there you have it. I think it's pretty straightforward. We went over a brief description of the equations used only for constant velocity. I told you, and you should always write down all five variables, fill in what you know and what you don't know, choose the right equation, plug the values in, give the answer with the correct units. Okay, there you go. Now here, I'm going to put at the end of this video, a link, some links to some further problems using kinematic equations, solving for acceleration, final velocity, time, and so on. So you can link to those videos here for some additional practice problems. And hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, you can do all of the following three things. Give me a thumbs up, click on the thumbs up down there, leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below, or, and, excuse me, not or, and subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the next video.